Hey, good afternoon. This is Joe Van Cleve. Today uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how I manage to uh, calculate exposure times with pinhole cameras. So, if you've seen any of my videos, you might have noticed that on many of my cameras, I'm going to have a label with some kind of a number on it. Like this particular 4x5 plywood camera has a label that says 4.79. Here's another camera made from a craft box and it has a number that says 2.44. Here's another one made from a cigar box and it says 3.52 and this big 5x7 camera has a number that says 6.77. So what are those numbers and what, is that, what does that have to do with calculating exposures on pinhole cameras? Well. I'm going to show you right now. Okay, so when we're talking about the focal ratio of your pinhole camera, let me just draw a little diagram. Let's say this is the side view cutaway of your camera. And here is your film in the, or paper negative in the back of the camera. Here's your pinhole up front. And light, of course, comes through like that and makes an image. Um, this distance right here is the focal length of the camera. You want to measure that and know what it is. And I usually measure it in millimeters. So that's big F, they call it, which is focal length. And then the size or the diameter of the opening of the pinhole itself, we're going to call D. And that's your focal ratio, or your F number of your pinhole camera. So I'll give you an example. Let's say you had a camera that was, I don't know, 200 millimeters in deep, a 200 millimeter focal length camera. And let's say your pinhole diameter was half a millimeter, 0.5. Then that would be F400, 200 divided by 0.5, F400 pinhole camera as an example. That's how you calculate the focal ratio of your pinhole camera and you want to know that in order to be able to figure out your exposure times. You have to measure the diameter of your pinhole. I usually do that um, by scanning the pinhole on my scanner and then I can measure it in Photoshop. You can also use just a, a metric ruler scale, hold the pinhole up behind next to the scale and backlight it and kind of estimate how many pinholes makes up a millimeter and then that tells you the, the number. But you have to know the focal ratio of your pinhole in order to know um, the uh, exposure, in order to calculate the exposures. So I use a handheld light meter to meter my exposures. This is a Gauss and Luna Pro F um, analog light meter. And I've found it to be quite reliable over the years. But one of the things you're going to notice on all these light meters is that the largest f-stop that the meter will read is on this one is f-128. Now, my typical pinhole cameras of any particular you know, size of large format and larger, it's going to have a focal ratio much greater than F128. So you can't directly use the reading of the meter to determine your exposure. You have to interpret it. And this is how you do it. So let's assume for the moment that we've metered our scene and we've zeroed the needle. Of course, it's not zeroed now, it's off. But let's say that the uh, the meter read at my highest F number, F128 opposite 2 seconds. So we're going to go with that and see how we can convert that for the actual pinhole camera that we have. So uh, let's assume for the moment that our pinhole camera had a focal ratio of F300. Now we've just made a meter reading at F 128 at 2 seconds. Okay, so the way you convert the um, exposure times is you take the F number of your camera, you divide it by the F number that you're metering at, which in this case is 128, and you square that number, and then you multiply it by the exposure time at 128. Okay, so I'm going to 
turn on this ancient calculator and see if we can do this here. So 300 divided by 128 equals times equals times 2 is 10.98. 10.98. So, what was a two-second exposure at F128 turns out to be about an 11-second exposure in my F300 pinhole camera. This is a lot of math to be doing out in the field. Um, but you'll notice that this part of the equation stays the same as long as you're using the same pinhole camera that has the same F number and as long as you're metering it the same way by referencing the exposure time at F128. So let's look at that. 300 divided by 128 squared is 5.49. Okay, So this is 5.49. If I was to take this number and put it on a label and stick it to the camera, that means that all I have to do is make a meter reading with my light meter, reference the time opposite F128 on the meter, and then multiply that time in seconds by this conversion factor that's on my camera, and I will have the exposure time already corrected and ready to go. Okay, so that's still a certain amount of calculation, but it's not really that bad. So what I do is I carry one of these right in the rain weatherproof pouches, and it has a right in the rain notebook, and in the notebook I make all of my exposure notes. And I carry one of these Fisher Space Pen type pens, and of course I carry a little uh, calculator. And so um, what I do is I have the camera set up, you know, for instance, uh, whatever camera it is, this one right here, for instance, and I will um, set it up on a tripod, compose the scene, and then I will take the meter, and I will make a meter reading of the scene, making sure that my ISO on the meter is set to what it should be. With my grade 2 paper negatives, it's usually an ISO of about 12. Um, then I will... Um, look at the K number or the, the conversion factor number on the label and I'll simply multiply that number by the time in seconds that's opposite F128 on the meter. And that's my exposure. Now keep in mind I'm using paper negatives. Paper negatives basically within reasonable amounts of exposure time, in other words in normal light levels from bright daylight to cloudy daylight, you're not going to have any reciprocity failure whatsoever. Because if you think about it, paper negatives are used, or photo paper is used in the darkroom to do printing, and typical printing times are 10, 20, 30, 40 seconds. That's normal. So there's no reciprocity failure in normal quantities of light, normal amounts of light. So when you do this conversion for the F number of your camera, uh, it'll be accurate you're not going to have any problem. Now if you're using sheet film on the other hand, sheet film does have reciprocity characteristics that you would also have to correct for. But for my uses with paper negatives, uh, using this little K number or conversion factor number or X number, whatever you want to call it, on the camera is a convenient way so that all of my cameras can be used the same way with the same metering technique. Okay, this is Joe Van Cleve and this has been how to meter and expose your pinhole camera. Have a good day.